the latest target in the culture war that has brought down Confederate monuments is a high school mural. This 1,600 square foot depression era mural in San Francisco's Washington High School depicts the life of George Washington. It was painted in 1936 by Russian artist Viktor Arnatov, a communist who was highly critical of America's history of racism. In one panel, Washington directs gun carrying colonists westward past what looks to be a slain Native American. In another, Arnatov depicts Washington negotiating with a slave owner and slaves working at Washington's Mount Vernon estate. The fresco has been criticized by an ad hoc committee of students and others who say it, quote, glorifies slavery, genocide, colonization, manifest destiny, white supremacy, and oppression. A meeting on the topic devolved into a screaming match. I'm a licensed psychologist. The trauma is real. Why don't you believe the trauma is real? Why don't you believe the trauma is real? Why don't you believe, believe the trauma is real? My daughter can't go there. The school board voted six to zero to get rid of or cover the mural. To do so will cost upwards of $600,000 before court costs. But a petition signed by more than 400 academics and educators urges the board to reconsider. Joining me now to discuss is Willie Brown, the former mayor of San Francisco. His daughter attended Washington High School. He wrote a column in the San Francisco Chronicle about the dispute entitled, The New America, Those Who Yell Loudest Win. Mayor, how do you see it and why? Well, it's frankly, I don't understand why anybody would not want the actual things that occurred in this country to be appropriately depicted for educational purposes. There's no other way to get the discussion going. And that's exactly what Anatov had in mind when he so displayed the horror of being part of George Washington's slave family. And one of those who was shouted down was a guy with the, the best body of knowledge about the artist who wanted to explain where he was coming from. Am I right? That is exactly right. You've got to know that in this country, when you talk about taking away a statute of Robert E. Lee, that's one thing. But removing a demonstration that constantly generates dialogue between people, as this particular mural does, is an educational tool. It's actually and should be a part of the curriculum. Mayor, so often today these battles devolve into the left versus the right, red states and blue states, but an LA Times editorial caught my eye. I'm going to put it up on the screen and read you something. They said, rather than the usual left-right divide, in this instance the fight is primarily among liberals. Those who want the mural removed because they consider it a traumatically offensive reminder to Native American and African American students of a horrible past and those who defend the mural as an honest and anything but racist representation of the nation's history, including its less than admirable aspects. Talk about a teachable moment. Is this a fight among liberals? <laughs> it is at the moment. It's a fight <laughs> among liberals. But then again, you cannot assume that because you're a liberal, you're well-informed. Because you're a liberal, you're artistically inclined. Because you're liberal, you're culturally oriented. That happens not to be the case. And believe me, it's unfortunate that it paints San Francisco dramatically different in somewhat akin to some of the other places in the country as not well-informed and certainly as not liberal. I read a letter that was sent to the New York Times by three members of the school board, and they were defending their position, and they said for 80 years... This has traumatized students. Now, I pointed out at the intro that your daughter is a graduate of that high school. For 80 years, has this been traumatizing students? Not at all. As a matter of fact, frankly, the mural was an instructional tool for dialogue in my family. We always, at dinner, discussed what occurred in the school, what occurred in the job, or some other place. And to have this particular opportunity those school board members obviously don't know what they are talking about. Okay, a naive question. Why in the hell would it cost 600, uh, assuming it were to go away or literally be whitewashed, 
why the hell would it cost $600,000? I think a couple of buckets of paint and a few buddies, I could knock it out for, for a hundred. <laughs> if you were going to do it, clearly you could do it with simply a roller and some paint for Sherman Williams or whomever, and it would not cost $600,000. Understand, however, San Francisco is different. We'll have to do an environmental impact report. We will have to make the appropriate kind of safety systems around removing this particular item or whitewashing it in some fashion. We will have to make sure it's union labor who's actually doing this. And then it, of course, has to be appropriately supervised. A combination of all, all of those things makes it incredibly expensive. Those school board members, if they want to move it, ought to go raise the money themselves or donate it. You're sounding like a conservative. Final question, where does this all, where does this all end up? Well, I suspect that the school board is going to have to seriously reconsider. Because for one time, it's the students who are saying, don't remove the mural. It's not their parents.